what we have here today is a Quantum Pro Drive ELS, a 170 megabyte drive out of a C SCSI enclosure. And, um, well, unfortunately, it is no longer with us. It has done the famous deteriorated rubber thing. I've actually taken all the screws out already. There's no hope of resurrecting this thing, obviously. Once this happens, these things are hopeless. Unless you have a replacement rubber piece. And, frankly, you have to catch it before the heads get destroyed, and I'm pretty sure this is already past that point. So, we're going to open this up in as clean of an environment as is really possible. Um, which is basically inside of this Ziploc bag that I've just opened fresh and put the entire enclosure in. Um, so... Yeah, let's see if I can just reach in here and pull the cover off. I'm wearing a, a surgical mask since, um, you know, uh, we are still in a pandemic season, sort of, so uh, I've got these at the ready. That way, no stray breath droplets will get in here either. Ah, there is the Quantum Pro Drive. Pretty elegant drive, really. And, um... Um... Actually, the heads don't look too badly damaged, honestly. Um... Looks about fine. Now, one thing that's really unique about these Quantum Pro drives is this little flap right here. So, if... I oh, really can't see it, since so this is dual platter drive. On the single platter one, that's really easy to see. On one of the platters, there are, like, fan blades, kind of, around the spindle. And what that allows for is the air pressure of the spin of the disc spinning up pushes this lever out of the way, and that is actually the parking brake for the head assembly. I know that's difficult to see at the angle you're at. Let me move it up here so you can see better. There's the lever. Kind of latches into the head assembly right there. So, there are other videos on older Pro Drives, or even on Quantum Mavericks, I think, that show this a little bit better. Now, anyway, without further ado, I'm going to use both hands for this because I don't want to stick my fingers into the power supply. <laughs> There's the problem. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Yep. So, you can see there the heads are colliding with the spindle, which is what happens in that rubber piece. It's a rubber stopper uh, toward the center here, underneath the platters. They're colliding with that. The heads have gotten so badly s scraped up now that it's actually being pried off the disc slightly. And you can actually hear it colliding with the disc now. I thought I was hearing that earlier. It has probably scored the disc a bit. Get the phone flash that action in on that. Uh, I really can't see any damage at the moment, but I'm sure there is some. Let's go ahead and power on the quadra and see what it does. <laughs> yeah, this thing's hopelessly dead at this point. Oh. Oh crap, we have a SCSI device ID conflict. Oops. That's a problem. Um, hold up, I'm gonna try to minimize fix this. Um, I'm going to pop the cover of the computer and unplug the internal drive. That should be plenty. In the meantime, let's go ahead and turn this off and we can see the damage even better. Yep. It's definitely touching. Yep. <sighs> that is not supposed to happen. It's supposed to park exactly right there. But that rubber piece fails, and you get that damage. Okay. So yeah, give me a minute. So basically this little cable is supposed to attach to the bottom of the drive, and 
the SCSI device ID selector on the back of the enclosure is supposed to allow you to select the SCSI device ID. And this is device ID 0 and because it's the internal drive, and this is also device ID 0 because there's no jumpers on it. So, just a mistake I made. Let's go ahead and turn this thing back on, have a closer look. As you can see, as the disk begins to spin, yep, it hits the center again. It's a good sign that it's still passing its seek test. That means I've actually kept it pretty sterile in there, actually. Although, I think the bag may be starting to hit the disc a bit. Anyway, can't be helped too much. Let's turn the quadra on again. Yep, yep, it's... Yep, and it just gives up. <laughs> yep. Now let's see what we can see. Oh yeah, there are score marks all over that disk. You shouldn't be able to see circular patterns on a hard drive, actually. That's bad. And as you can see, there actually is an operating system on that drive, System 7.5, uh, 7 I think. And it's not even seeing the drive anymore. If we go ahead and hit the reset button on the Quadra, it'll try again. Oh gosh, now it's so badly damaged it's not even parking correctly. Let's give it another go just since it's already gone. really unfortunate. This is my favorite sounding quantum hard drive they ever made, frankly. It's so distinctly clunky. Yeah. That is unfortunately all she wrote. It's a real shame. Yep. This actually was working. Sort of. Kind of. I actually got an operating system on it. I got that copy system 7.5 on there. I rebooted the machine. It started to boot, but then it just locked up and was making this terrible sound. And now, this is all it'll do. What a shame, man. I'm curious, though. Why it's not parking correctly now. <laughs> yep, so just turn it down to do the same thing. <laughs> okay, on a power down, it's fine. It's interesting, but that's. So, if your quantum drive starts scraping like that, so it's making that terrible scraping sound. And there is data on the drive that you care about. Get it off and retire the drive, because it has a very finite number of power-ons left. Because with each spin-down, it's going to scrape up more to the head, and eventually you're going to get it where the head is bent in such a way that it is colliding with the disc platter, and that'll be it. We'll get this problem. Let me pull it out of the enclosure now since it's clearly long dead at this point. Let me get a closer look. Alright, so I don't know how well this is picking up on the video, but 
Hard drive platters should be completely shiny, right? There are a lot of score marks on there. All over. All over. So that makes me wonder. If we go ahead and manually, carefully move the head, so we're not putting any... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's scraping all right. Not enough that you can actually really see it, but also put a nice fingerprint on there if it had any hope of working. It's gone now, but yeah. Um, you hear that? That's the sound of the heads colliding with the platters. Um, will the heads go completely off the platters? This drive? No, not quite. Okay, I'm gonna... I'm going to fully disassemble this and I'm gonna see if we can get any more clear evidence of what's going on here. So this is the top platter removed. Now the score marks you see in the center are actually just from the... from the little holder dealy. Those aren't actually the problem. But actually, I might have been wrong about these having score marks on them. Dry, drives from this era may just look this way. I don't know. But if we go to the bottom... There's the problem. There's our head crash. Very clearly. You see those speckles? Yeah, those aren't supposed to be there. Uh, yeah. Um, and if we set the platter out to the side here... Well... We can see head number two has completely broken off of the actuator arm. <sighs> yep. That is the scraping sound that we were hearing. Oops, I parked the, I parked the drive. Modern hard drives use a magnet for the parking brake, by the way. So that it can still fly loose if it needs to. And I guess... This doesn't have the fan blade things that I was talking about. But, uh... Let's go ahead and, uh... How... would one go about removing the second platter? I actually don't know. I may have to get all of this out first. But, yeah, let me see if I can get to it. Well, there is absolutely no way I'm getting that screw out. It now makes sense why I actually saw a video where somebody drilled that particular screw out instead of trying to unscrew it. Um, that occurs to me, I don't need to protect this drive's internals at all. I'm just going to bend the... Well, actually, I may just break the parking brake off. Oh, okay, that might work. Okay. Listen, come on, come on, nope, nothing, okay, well, let's, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna try something else. And never mind, that thing's not coming out because I didn't realize the hub is actually attached to the motor and not to the spindle, yeah, so, but that's okay, because if I get over here, I can see... Our culprit is, I was actually wrong in calling it head two, it's actually head three. Yeah, head four looks okay, head one and two look fine. Head three is the poor guy that failed. Of course, given time and more power cycles, they all would have. Because they were literally hitting the, the hub. And you can see, there is a... A big old score mark toward the center there, near the park position. The sad thing is, this will eventually happen to all of these ELS and even some of the early LPS models. Um, just because of that rubber stopper. I was hoping to get under the platter so we could see that, but... I'm not wearing eye protection. I don't own eye protection that I could really be wearing right now, and the only way I'm getting in there is by breaking the platter. 
which, like I said, no eye protection, that's not a good idea, because it could, usually they break in half, it could very easily violently shatter, though, depending on the material it's made out of. So, yeah, I'm not, not about that. Um, if I turn it upside down, you see it just doesn't, doesn't quite want to come out of there. Yeah. I mean, maybe if I took the PCB out, I may try that. Let's try taking the PCB out. Well, just removing the PCB is an illustration of the issue in its own right. Uh, once upon a time, this was called foam. Yeah, it's um, it's now it's dust. Dude, the foam isolating hard drives from the circuit board in iPod Classics has gone to seed by this point. This is hopeless. This is a mess, is what this is. I didn't even know there was foam in here. I know now, I guess. And I was hoping... to see some exposed... screws. Wait a minute, how the heck? I am actually so... Oh! Oh, okay, it's these contacts. I was like, bro, how does this connect? Let me get this. What is this? Why is it here? Why is there like a rubber piece blocking the contacts for the motor? kind of conductive thing that's really interesting okay I don't understand how that works but yeah this is some kind of direct motor assembly that's like attached to this machined block of aluminum that the drive is made out of so there's no hope of me getting that out of there well we learned what we needed to learn I was just hoping I could actually illustrate what the problem itself is, but I guess I can't. Oh well. This is a pretty, uh... I guess you could call this a catastrophic failure. Because effectively what's happened here is the rubber piece failed, which causes the parking mechanism to no longer work correctly. The parking mechanism no longer working correctly means that at least one of the heads inevitably fails. When the head fails, it scores the disc, making the entire disc unusable. So yeah, I believe that fits the definition of a catastrophic failure. That is, um... You know, I can't lie. That's actually pretty fascinating. It's sad, but it's... Oh gosh, pieces of foam are falling on my legs. Oh no. Uh, we're just gonna. Uh, no. Oh, come on. This is such a mess. Oh, it's all over my extended keyboard, too. No. Actually, this is extended keyboard one. What am I saying? Anyway. Oh, God. I'm gonna have. Oh, okay. We're just gonna. Huh. That's a little better. Well, there you have it. Now, of course, I do have to wonder what happens if we reconnect it now, although I don't know if it's even going to work anymore. Now that I've taken the PCB out, it may not. Well, let me put that one important screw back in, and we'll see what happens. I don't know if I put that conductive piece back in properly. It is entirely possible this is just going to blow the fuse in the power supply. But let's see. That probably woke up my parents.
I don't know why I thought that was a good idea. It was exciting. <laughs> Roundabout.mp3.